It's not every day I stumble into an RV <laughs> that does this off the front. Hello everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. Well, I'm actually down here at Grand Designs Display today getting my first look at the new Saranova series. A lot of people don't realize this is something that's actually kind of been in the weeds and in development off and on for about three years now, and they finally had the opportunity to really finish and dial it in. And let's call a spade a spade a duck a duck. Let's rip this band-aid off. There's probably gonna be some people around this display that don't appreciate what I'm about to say, but it's a fact, Jack. It's very much inspired by Intec. Let's just get that out of the way before the comment section blows up on this thing. But that's the thing. Um, Everybody does a lot of RV R&D, a little bit of rip off and duplicate, but that doesn't mean that they can't bring their own DNA to the equation. So what kind of things are we uh, finding here in the Saranova? And actually, there's some really smart content here. So they are using uh, double Asdell walls, so Asdell layering on the inside and outside, and the flooring is also all composite. So it's, you know, uh, the general structure mostly is woodless. I say mostly because you do still have a wood constructed roof that is fully walkable. Up top there, you've also, of course, got your big roof mounted air conditioner and your um, solar panel, I believe 200 watt solar panel, just to offer a little bit of battery tending. Uh, also helps offset that 12 volt compressor fridge. And with a 30 amp controller, you could expand on that a little bit. It doesn't have a factory inverter, but it is inverter prepped and they're using 10 gauge wiring, which would allow you to go up to a 2000 watt inverter to um, activate every household outlet in this RV, which is going to be enough for things like CPAP machines, coffee makers, stuff like that. You've got a convection microwave oven, but not a full propane uh, gas oven. Thankfully, you've got propane cooking outside in the form of a little propane cooker hooker. And this thing has surprising storage outside of it, actually more so than I've seen on uh, several other much, much larger RVs today. Underbellies and clothes, forced air heated, tank heaters, uh, Goodyear tires, prep for TPMS. It's everything you expect out of a grand design, just wrapped up into a different shape. And I'd be kind of curious to know what you think about this as we go. Now, today we're actually going to get a two for one. We're going to spend most of our time in the 160, but I am going to pop over to the 150 Saranova uh, before we wrap up our interior footage, just so that you can see the other layout. Because basically, they're the same two thirds uh, of the camper. It's only, you know, your sleeping arrangement that kind of changes on this. Now, your interior height is variable, and there's going to be some people that tell you how tall it is. And Here's what I can tell you. I'm a little over six foot. I can walk and stand through the entire thing. That's all I really need to know or care. Uh, it is ventless, easy cleaning. Uh, it does have ducted heating, which is actually kind of a pleasant surprise. So it should heat uh, pretty comfortably, you know, if you are going to do any kind of cold camping. This is also very interesting. You're going to hear the word Euro a lot in this. Whenever you get into these uh, curvy campers, the, uh, the, the phrase Euro starts coming in. You've got a Euro door. One of the cool things on the Euro door, though, is that it has this kind of cool built-in screen. Basically, it's the exact same thing as that day shade, just really big and tall. One of the other things I really like about this, because it's useful inside or outside, is it has a trash can basically built right into it. Now, I don't know exactly what size trash bags you use for that, but, you know, it's there, basically. Up front here, they did a very grand designing kind of thing with that single telescopic uh, dinette leg. And that, uh, you know, can lock in the up position, you know, for dining or desk work. You can obviously, you know, push that down for a sleep or else. I'll demonstrate that for you uh, later in a little bit here. Um, in the meantime, though, you know, tell me what other camper, uh, <laughs> other than an Intec, gives you... <laughs> views like this like if we're calling a spade a spade a duck a duck i'm not going to conveniently forget to uh talk about uh you know in tech when we're looking at one of these but i i like to draw comparisons in my videos to help you kind of decide which one works for you now the tv kind of sits over there in the corner but it can pivot and swing around so that if you want your back um like uh over here yeah hold on my finger's not on camera where's my where's my finger there if you want your back over here um, you can do that and then just kind of kick your feet up and lounge and stare at it. Or you can sit where I'm at and, uh, you know, you could pivot the TV around and, and enjoy things from there. Now that is a, uh, LED smart TV. I think that might be 12 volt. I'm not sure. I got to double check the wiring on that because it looks like there's an inline fuse up there. Now up top here, 
You've just got some extra power outlets and whatnot, but that will be for like if you want to add a, a satellite system or anything like that. Uh, we've got a Furion 12 volt compressor fridge over here that looks to be, I'm thinking like an eight cubic foot variety, which is a much larger refrigerator than I normally find in a camper this size. So I'm not exactly upset about that either. They do a lot of, um, you know, uh, little spotlights, but also a bunch of indirect lighting in this RV. So you never really get stabbed directly in the face with anything too awful bright, but it never really feels super dark in here. And notice how you do have that big XL vent fan uh, up there in the ceiling back in that area. So if you want to open all these like mega Euro windows, these things provide absolutely unparalleled airflow. They are also the single most noise canceling uh, window that's really uh, available out there. Now, a couple extra handy little details on both sides of this front dinette overlooking the windshield, you'll see some household and USB plugs up there. And if you notice, this is actually fairly deep. Let me try to scoop my fat butt back out of this dining area <laughs> right here. Um, that's actually fairly deep. So you really could put some things up there, although obviously the more you put up there, the more you're going to kind of block your view of stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of keep that in mind. Now, as long as we're staring at the front end, let's go ahead and finish her up here. Cracking all this open, I, I do like the hardware, how it kind of holds um, the, uh, you know, all the doors and everything open. That's very nice right there. Obviously that uh, dinette can fold down to an extra sleeper. And again, we do have that big 12 volt compressor fridge over here providing us with, uh, you know, ample cooling uh, capacity and, and, and food capacity, you know. Now, flipping around the other direction, we kind of peeked at it briefly here. Your upper kitchen cabinetry squares off a little bit. And I don't mind that because while radius cabinetry looks really pretty and neat, square cabinetry, right angle cabinetry is far more functional. I'm not trying to cheese anybody off. My personal thing, if you, uh, I, I'm not a super big Airstream person um they're they're neat they're they're neat but and and if you like airstreams cool i'm not trashing like you know the music that i listen to is garbage you're probably going to think the music i listen to is garbage and if you said that i wouldn't be offended it's just your opinion that's cool but i you know a lot of these brands their kitchen cabinetry it's it, they're trying to make it look neat and you literally can't even put a box of count chocula up there now this one you can it actually makes sense i'm going to get all this storage open for you uh in just a minute here they go with um almost kind of truck campery sort of stuff here where you have a fold down sink and stove though to really kind of maximize your uh potential uh prep space now i'm actually going to scoot my butt over into the bathroom and crack stuff open here so first right below that stove you see you do have a convection microwave oven um you've also got double adjustable pots and pans drawers here which is kind of cool with a couple big drawers down below that now, obviously, up top there, you've got your overhead uh, cabinet space. You don't have, like, a single dedicated thing I call a pantry in this RV, but in a small RV, uh, it's fairly normal, so I don't really knock them for that. I do like, though, how they hide away all the controls and just give it a nice kind of clean uh, look about the whole thing. Uh, again, back here as we approach the, uh, the rear queen bed, uh, you see you have that big XL vent fan really cycling the air around the sucker. And once again, like I said, lots of indirect lighting in this RV really kind of lightens and brightens it up, along with the fact on a day like today, if you have any kind of good, uh, you know, sunshine, man, the airflow coming through this thing is just glorious right now. I've been sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons for a while, and I'm going to give him some credit. They didn't just slap in the cheapest factory backbreaker death wafer you've ever seen in one of these things, but it is a sideways crawl into the middle of it, crawl over one another at night kind of bed. And that might be uh, a problematic factor for some folks. So I wanna make sure I point that out. I also wanna make sure I point out that in both of these upper corners where it would be weird and awkward to kind of fully enclose stuff, they added some household and USB outlets up there. So like you can have your own little phone charger stations and whatnot. So I think that that's a, uh, a handy little, you know, smart detail feature that they put in there. Now here in the 160, in the queen bed model, we, we're gonna start with a couple dresser drawers right down below here. But then obviously up top, you've got a whole halo of storage uh, going on in that, those, those doors. But what I like is how each door is its own separate pocket. There's those vertical dividers in there so that you can make sure that like your clothes and stuff, uh, if you're bouncing down the road, you have to go through some construction zones you weren't planning on. It doesn't leave your stuff all in a tussle, you know, when you uh, get to your destination, you don't have to totally reorganize everything. 
Now, we're going to look at the bathroom, and then I'm going to jump over to the 150, which has a slightly different um, back-end arrangement. But from the bathroom and kitchen forward, the two RVs are exactly identical, which is why I'm going to two-for-one this video here today. Now, um, the, uh, the bathroom, the shower space right here, uh, actually, it occurs to me, I don't think I actually stood in that, and I don't think I got my toilet selfie footage before I started recording this, so I guess you'll have to gauge based on my facial reactions, um, uh, you know, if it is or isn't. I'm eyeballing it, and I think it might actually be kind of decent for uh, somebody my height. Now, you do have a center medicine cabinet. You see how that, you got the mirror there. That will swing open. You've got some of those little tension bands on the sides to keep your Lipitor in place. It does have a tankless on-demand water heater, by the way, so you can take some longer showers. And in a small camper like this, trying to give you a, uh, a bathroom with space to sit around the toilet, uh, which this is fairly fluffy friendly, which I do really like, but also give you a sink is hard. So what they opted for here is a folding sink. Now, obviously, when it folds down, you're not using the toilet. But when it's when you're using the toilet, you probably don't actively need a sink. And when you need a sink, you probably don't actively need a toilet. So um, I don't know. For me, that kind of, you know, makes a little bit of sense. But everyone's got their own different take and opinion on that. So this is the 160. Again, I want to jump over to the 150. But from that kitchen countertop and that bathroom wall forward they're exactly the same it's what's behind them that changes so transporting over to this one here it is a uh instead of just a rear private uh, well i guess not really private but instead of a rear queen model it's a bunk model it's a bed over a bed you can see now the reason that's not fully enclosed and those aren't drawers is uh, and they have those black strips is that's reinforced so you can basically walk up those things to get to the upper bunk here and actually I haven't really looked around this one too awful much. Um, what I'm wondering is, is there anything in the way of like power outlets or windows or airflow in here? Okay, so behind me, I looked the wrong direction. Behind me in the upper left, there are a set of household and USB plugs, but there's no like air vents or anything back there. So that might be something to consider. You also don't have windows. Whereas like down here, you know, yeah, I got windows wrapped all the way around this sucker. The airflow across that could be absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the things this one does pretty nicely, though, is it actually has more, like, personal storage. So if you take note here, you've got, like, the double dressers off to the side, and you've got, like, a hanging wardrobe closet over there. What's also interesting is you can either use it as additional clothing space, or over here on the left side, that could function like a kitchen pantry so that's not too awful bad also something that's kind of cool this one offers privacy however once again i do want to mention that at least at this time in this prototype this does not have any sort of centralized air vents running through the roof so if you do close that off you might end up hot boxing yourself back there now for a quick reference here today, the weights and measures that we're looking at is specifically on the 160 LG, the uh, the rear queen bed model. The uh, you know the the one with the two bunks in the back might have slightly different specs, but in both cases you're going to have about a 5,000 pound GVW. It's going to be give or take about 4,000 pounds empty. That is on the the lower end of what I prefer on cargo capacity, but on single axle campers, frankly, that's pretty normal. The thing is for towability factors, it's narrow body. Um, it's a, a little more wind friendly shape compared to a lot of RVs. That being said, I'll never call an RV like this aero optimized because frankly, they're not. They don't wind chamber them. They don't do that kind of stuff. Uh, but it in maybe in theory has a little bit better slipstream. I don't know I don't have the science behind it up front here. You got the little um, hard shell cover like uh, you've also obviously got a full-on like full sleeve nose cap and that's actually one of the kind of cool things is it actually moves that front seam where wind could hit and cause uh, You know extra wear and stress on things, uh, you know possibly causing leaks which is not something we want and moving it from an area of high stress to low stress now this is an earlier prototype so don't be surprised if some things update before this goes live like for instance right now this does not yet have the magnet holdbacks for the baggage doors they will um, they are going to have white magnet holdbacks on the side of a white sidewall which just hasn't been put in place yet this is an anti-slam door, this Euro door, and it does have a magnet holdback. But again, you may have remembered from our early floor plan and a flash footage, kind of like a motorhome. You actually have a power extend retraction step 
Uh, that's a new thing that Lippert's offering, which I think is kind of cool. Now, you've got Goodyear Endurance radials on this thing, 87 mile an hour rated, not rated for a Doc Brown's Time Machine DeLorean thing, but one mile an hour off that. Um, it is also prepped and ready uh, for a TPMS system, so you can just kind of plug and play one of those suckers to give you a little more peace of mind. And the underbelly of this, they give it the same treatment that they give on stuff like Imagines and Reflections and all that. It's enclosed. It is forced air heated. They do have the radiant barrier layering in the underbelly. They also have holding tank uh, heat pads for all your holding tanks. And with the curvature of this thing, they can't have the world's biggest awning on it, but they are using one of those little kind of like legless awnings. Now that awning over there is not fully deployed, just in case you're curious. It's just, it's a little bit windy today. So they left it partially out to sort of give you the idea. Now something else that kind of really surprised me on this, it's probably adding a couple pounds, but I think it's something that some folks are going to enjoy for the ease and simplicity are the four corner power stabilizers on this. So you never really do any manual cranking. And I just spotted down here, like that's a propane cooker hooker. And that right there is a stinky slinky sewer holder. And it occurs to me, I have way too many stupid nerdism names for everything. We have ourselves a little outdoor mini fridge. And my name for that is dad's medicine cabinet. We are just crushing the nerdisms today. Ooh, I like that little rear tail cap that's some classic stuff right there you got the double tail lights with reverse track i'll tell you what man you got a lot of reverse lighting on this holy crap batman uh once again there will be some holdbacks for these baggage doors but you can fit an awful lot of junk inside that trunk which makes me wonder what you gonna do with all that junk all that junk inside that trunk I mean, holy crap, man. And there's yet another baggage compartment over here that we haven't even got into yet. That'll be your docking center. We'll get there in just a second. Great demonstration right here of all those Euro windows. Now let's talk good, bad on these. These have two and a half times better insulative quality, even as compared to dual pane RV windows. So uh, th that being said, I think they're like an R2.6 or something like that. It's still not amazing but it's about as good as it gets. Now, the good news here, they're extremely noise dampening because you can see how thick they are right here. So sound doesn't really translate through here very well. Um, and you can use your day shade as a bug screen, but if there's bugs here and then you close the window, you now have bugs inside your camper. So that's kind of the, the plus and the minus on those. And again, I hope you appreciate the fair information. It's not always just sunshine and rainbows. Now, apologies, I'm flipping baggage doors in your face. Normally I wouldn't do that, but without the magnet hold backs on these, I don't have much of a choice yet. And that's where your gate poles are uh, located for your, your sewer outlets. And thankfully, this does have a single sewer outlet just in front of that tire right there. Now the little fenders that are sticking out over the wheel wells, those are no step fenders. This is not made for uh, walking on. You know, these boots ain't made for walking. <laughs> but um, think about this. It's a narrow body camper. So it's like a seven foot body profile, but it's an eight foot long wide axle. When the axle is wider than the trailer, that provides enhanced uh, towing stability and going along with that, it's also a, uh, a torsion axle and suspension. So uh, it'll give you a little bit better ride and handling still. This is one of the other things that I think is um, really defining on this product. It's an all aluminum chassis. So as always, I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can see if we have any of these in stock and if we do where they're available, I would say check pricing. But Grain Designs manufacturing uh, and advertising policies prevent us from displaying our discounted sale prices online. So if you're curious about a price, I am required to ask you to contact our people. I'd prefer to make it easier than that, but that's what I have to do in this case. Um, and like I said, right when this video began, yes, it's very heavily inspired by Intech. Without a question, no doubt. This actually kind of reminds me, like a year or two ago, Jayco kind of did something like this called Velare, and I did the first video on the prototype, and I haven't really seen anything on that since. I wonder if that's still being developed or not. I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. Either way, this is here. And uh, uh, again, we've got the couples model with the bed in the back or solo model. We've got a couple bunk model and they have a, a, another model, I think, with a slide also coming out. I'll get whatever I can when I can for you. I hope you appreciate the footage today. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.